Hello and welcome to another in the series of Conversations Around with the World with Three Principles Practitioners. And today I'm delighted to have as my guest Guy Fisher, who started Sydney Bank's product products.com. I'm obviously going to have trouble with my words this morning, I have to get my teeth in better, uh, who started Sydney Banks product, products.com. <laughs> Guy, you'll have to change the name, I can't say it properly. <laughs> and um, he ships books and the tapes and the DVDs of Sydney Banks into Europe and he's providing a great service for us all and I know quite a lot of you have already used his service. So. Guy and I are going to chat about how he first got into the three principles and why he started Sydney Banks products and generally talk about going back to the source, which I know something's, that's something he wants to talk about. So it's my complete pleasure to welcome Guy Fisher to the call. Hello, Guy. Hello, Gillian. How are you? Your teeth, um, well, have you got your teeth back in now? Uh, I think I'm going to have to go to the dentist <laughs> and get a new set. <laughs> Uh, very good, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me uh, on your hangout today. Oh, it's it's lovely to see you. Um, you and I've been friends for a while, and, and we've um, been in other mastermind groups together. So uh, it's lovely that you're on this three principles journey now. I'd love to start by asking you, how did it all begin? How did you get into the three principles? Well, it's funny um, because you and I um, knew each other. Uh, for, or have known each other now for quite a few years, as you said. Um, but I, interestingly enough, I didn't find out about the three principles through you, um, although you had probably mentioned um, what you were doing, and I let it all go over my head, and you know, nothing clicked for me at the time. Um, but I was, um, I suppose, a little bit stuck in my life and, and wondering what to do. Um, and a friend of mine um, called me up out of the blue and was pitching to coach to me. Um, uh, and he gave me a few exercises, you know, the usual free thing. Uh, and, and I was, a, you know, a little bit interested and, you know, willing to help him out a bit. Um, and he said, he, he dropped into the conversation um, about how somebody called Michael Neal, who probably people on the call know who Michael Neal is, is making stacks of money. That was basically the gist of it. So anyway, our conversation carried on um, and I thanked him for his time. And then because I like finding things out, I thought, right, who's this Michael Neal Blake is making all this money? Anyway, found him online uh, and I found um, eventually uh, an audio that he did with Jamie Smart and they were just conversing. And they, they talked about uh, something that, that Sid talked about. So they were discussing one of Sid's audios at the time. And they talked about the, the cosmic joke. And my ears pricked up to this. Um, and I, I heard something, which I probably can't um, remember exactly what it is now, but something grabbed my attention. So having gone to Michael's stuff for a completely different reason, um, I, I ended up um, hearing somebody in that conversation um, that, that took me to Sydney Banks. So they mentioned Sid, Sydney Banks as the, the person uh, who, who what was providing this material that they were teaching. So my intuition or you know, my thoughts were, right, who's this Sydney Banks? And away I went and found out a little bit about him. Um, but then found it very, very difficult at the time to get hold of his materials. Um, his books were available on Amazon, which they are still when they've got stocks. Um, and, you know, as I said, the, the rest sort of carried on. And then... Uh, you know, I stumbled across various bits of information, um, and and I remember having a, a very very profound um, experience. I think after I'd read *The Enlightened Garden*, um, where or or I'd heard something, one of Sid's, an extract of Sid's material online on YouTube or something like that, and I remember my whole world stopped in a moment, and I 
it's quite extraordinary, but I went for a walk in slow motion. Um, and that's very, you know, people think, oh my goodness, what, what are you talking about? But I literally um, went for a walk and everything slowed down for, for a moment. Um, and, you know, having that sort of slight experience for, for somebody who had a, a very, very busy mind and was, you know, quite insecure, I guess, um, that felt very stuck in my life and uh, beat myself up on quite a few things. And that, that was quite a revelation. So I suppose my entry um, led me to, to, to where I am now, you know, looking at this a lot further. And, and then, you know, I realised that this is what you had been um, looking at with Jamie uh, for quite a while, and that's when you and I got back together um, over all of this. Uh, and you, you mentioned the Tekken conference in London, um, which I think you know, the first one I went to was in uh, 2012, um, and I went to that, and from there, uh, it introduced me to. Um, for the you know the, some of the teachers, and I was lucky enough to uh, get directly in contact with Keith Blevins, Dr. Keith Blevins, and, and uh, spent about a year on and off every week talking to them uh, over the telephone, um, and, and then more recently uh, with Elsie Spittle. Um, so, so that's kind of my long convoluted way of how I got into it all and, uh, and what I've been up to in the last probably just over two years, yeah. Um, and that, then as you mentioned, I, I set up SydneyBanksProducts.com just purely um, uh, in frustration, if you like, um, and I saw it not, not even a business opportunity, you know, it really doesn't... Um, <laughs> yeah, makes enough money to cover my costs, I suppose. Um, but but hopefully it's providing service to, to people who want to buy uh, in Europe and the UK, uh, so that they can access the products hopefully at a, a sensible price and, and get hold of the materials quickly. Um, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Lovely. Um just to mention, Guy, before we go deeper into the conversation, that I know you're going to offer people a, a special discount as part of this hangout um, for those those that are listening. And we'll talk about that towards the end of the conversation, but I just wanted to throw yeah. it out there so, so people know that there will be a, a very special offer at the end of this hangout. Um, I'm curious about lots of things. You mentioned the cosmic joke. Is that something you'd like to expand upon? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, just to put a caveat on on everything that I'm going to say today, um, you know, it's my my opinion. I, I'm not a, a three principles trainer, uh, and and having thought that it may be something that I would want to do formally, I think I've come to the conclusion that 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 I uh, kind of want to, you know, I'm. I'm Understanding the principles at this stage um, for myself, if you like, and, and then what comes of it, I don't know. But one of the, the things that I've picked up personally uh, is that you know, not not to work on myself, but but the, the way I see the better I can share the principles is to 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 to, to be you know myself um, first of all. Uh, so the cosmic joke, um, I'll probably get it all wrong, but I think it was that they talked about the illusion um, of what what life actually is, um, and you know, I, no one had ever told. Well, they probably had told me, but I'd never got it. I'd never heard. You know, I've heard people say that we're um, spiritual beings having a, a physical. Experience, and I thought, oh yeah, 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 you know, I kind of get that, but I, I really didn't. And then the sort of penny dropped for some reason, uh, and I glimpsed it, and I um, started to see um, that, that that was true for, for me, and that had quite a sort of profound effect. Um, and you know, 
that that everything is is an illusion, and um, it, it it is um, not not made up because you know it's real. Um, but but for me, you know, it's seeing really what truth is, what what's really going on, uh, and I found that enlightening. I found it um, felt really true, sort of in my heart, um, and you know, I, I knew that. I was looking in the right place uh, when I heard that. You know, having been, I suppose, for the last ten years, um, someone who is completely dissatis dissatisfied with life, um, uh, and I'm lucky. You know, you look at my life, and you know, I'm extremely fortunate. Um, you know, I've got got a, a great young family. Um, my, my work life's pretty good, and my balance there. Um, you, you know had no major hardships, but yet, uh, like a lot of people who, who I find uh, in, you know, doing self-development, seem to be this sort of um, expectation of life that was, that was false for me, uh, and I, you know, always thought that life should be better, that I should have more, um, why aren't I happy, <laughs> what, you know, what, what are all these things, and, and you know, I suppose, just by seeing a glimpsing the illusion, it was oh my goodness, you know, I've been completely looking uh, in the wrong place for, for such a long time. Uh, and I could turn my camera around and show you my bookshelves, which are up there, but I literally felt like I could shed um, 85 90% of the books I bought over the last 10 years. Um, as you know, I didn't need them anymore. Uh, and actually, more recently, I have started to sell sell some of the stuff on on eBay, um, just because it's cluttering up my office. I, I don't need to go and do stuff. Uh, my my life isn't. I'm not so attached to the outcome of my business ventures, which I've had a few. You know, some have worked, some haven't. You know, I've lost money here and there. And, um, you know, and and the outcome is um, is good if it comes, but but I'm not so attached to stuff anymore, and that that's a big relief. Um, yeah, and I've made a few mistakes along the way, and you know, like everyone screwed up here and there, um, but but that's part of learning. Um, and I think, yeah, this is something else. I. I I, I used to get very, very frustrated with the newspaper and the press and things like that. And um, but now, you know, I, I looked at the paper just this morning, um, which arrives every day. My wife likes reading it, um, and you know, ev every single piece of information that I could see on the, the front of the paper, you, you could explain it all or forgive it all with one. One truth, um, uh, and I could be quite controversial with this, but I don't mind. You know, even to the extent um, the, the Jerry Adams, uh, the IRA stuff that's in the paper. Um, he's, I hear he's just been charged with a murder a long time ago, uh, and I, you know, even that comes down to this misunderstanding of how life works that that, that I've come to see and. Uh, others, others see for themselves is, you know, that the guy um, got caught up in uh, a culture or or a belief at the time, and you, you know, I, I have com even, you know, even though he might have done something, or these other people on the paper who have done other things, you know, I I, I have compassion for them now, um, for whatever people do, and that that's a, you know. Again, a, a better way for me to go around um, my life, not not sort of blaming or judging people as much as I used to do. And you know, everybody does things because generally it's the best they know at the time, just like you know I was. Um, yeah. So, okay, I don't know whether that answers the question in any way about the cosmic joke, but we could go on talking about it forever, couldn't we? We could. There's no bottom think... to it. Yeah. I think you know it's an interesting point that you raise about stuff in the newspaper um, and the IRA that um, Jerry Adams 
issue that is hitting the news at the moment, um, whatever truth or non-truth there is in that. And I think with this, you know, we're not saying whatever he did or didn't do, what they're alleging that happened was an act that he perpetrated. But the human, the, the spiritual being inside Jerry Adams, his connection wasn't there at the time, perhaps. And it's it's not forgiving the act, is it? It's it's understanding the innocence. It may yeah. seem like a strange term, but the innocence of him not understanding that he had the connection to the wisdom but he had he wasn't hearing it at the time so he thought as you say his beliefs or whatever but you know, were in a, a place that it seemed to be the right course of action and the more we get in touch with this understanding with our wisdom the less that would seem like the right course of action for us, for anybody. And I think that's, that's huge. That's huge for humankind, mm. for this understanding. Exactly. Um, and, you know, I remember when I first had that sort of slow motion walk, um, you know, as daft as this may sound, um, you know, I saw all the way down the tunnel to world peace. Yeah, I don't know how that would be achieved, but I, but I, I, what I saw was that, it, in my opinion anyway, uh, or my belief, is that the only way uh, to achieve this is through, through a better understanding of how life works, not by um, holding a stick to people or going to war, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it, it's, that's not the answer. Um, but there's nothing that I can do um, to, to go, you know, shout with my megaphone, um, you know, don't go to war. I just see that, you know, you know relax about it. Um, the only thing I can do is to um, understand life more, you know, the truth behind it through, through uh, understanding these principles and similar teachings. Um, because it, it'll filter out. That's the way it's going to filter out um, to everything, you know, greed, um, the, the whole way down the, the line. Um, so, as you know, it's quite profound and probably fairly so deep. People tuning into this and thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, we talk about world peace. We're expecting that on this call. But that's what I saw, um, uh, you know, and, and that's what I do. You know, I... I still listen to Sid's materials regularly you know a lot of times I get in the car by, by myself I, I'll listen I'll learn something new every single time I listen to uh, Sid I hear something new um, which is quite extraordinary um, and that you know for, for me I, I personally enjoy listening to his stuff um, because I've got obviously got it available, um, you know I've got all, all the stuff I can get my hands on, um, and you know why? Why? I'm not saying that people won't get insight from other teachers. Of course they will, um, and an insight can come just like that. You know, we all know in an instance, and just like I heard from, from Michael and Jamie, uh, and their great work they're doing. Uh, speaking to you know, many thousands of people across the globe uh, for me it was right I want to go back to the as close to the source as I can and, and that's why you know partly I picked my my two mentors or teachers or the people that, that I've been sharing my understanding and they've been sharing theirs with being Keith um, and his wife uh, with Elsie because you know they were very close to Sid when he was alive um, so that made sense for me. It may not work for everybody, and you know, not everyone might have the resources to, to be able to do that. Um, and you know, there's plenty of other opportunity out there online to 
to listen to these guys. There's some brilliant material out there now. Yeah. And you're doing your bit by um, making it available to us. Well, Sid's material is available to us. Well, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we're a bit the, uh, well, we're recording this. 1st of May uh, 2014 we've got the Innate Health Conference coming up in about 10 days time uh, in London so you know I'm fortunate to, to be there running the shop again this year um, yeah so that'd be good well I think you've got somebody helping you guy haven't you <laughs> I think I might do Gillian so I'm very grateful for that yeah absolutely yeah yeah I'm curious to know, just something just popped into my mind, with what you're seeing, how that's affected your relationships and your friendships with people. Have you have you noticed a difference or a deepening of, of anything or what would you yeah. say about that? Yeah, I, I'd say again it comes from me. Um, no, nobody else has changed. Um, everybody around me is the same. Um, but but I feel more easy um, with people. Um, certain situations, I was always you know relatively confident. So going into a business meeting, no problem. Um, p people who I sort of held on a pedestal, if you like, um, who I might sort of look up to, uh, I, I'm a lot more comfortable approaching them. I'm a lot more sort of easy around people so that's been you know a huge blessing um, because I, I guess my my thinking prior to that was that I'm inferior uh, to you because you've achieved things that you know I aspire to or whatever but but actually you know when you perhaps you know perhaps a bit of advice you know if you look at somebody who you, you might hold or I, I held up in a on that pedestal, you know, if you break down their life and say, you know, should we do a swap, and you know a little bit about their life, um, then, you know, 100%, I haven't found anyone I'd like to swap with, um, because, you know, what suits them maybe doesn't suit me. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I've got a, a young family, and I, I love being around to to be with them, so. You know, I, I couldn't sort of do a job where I'm traveling around the world or even traveling more than 40 miles a day, you know, it doesn't suit me. Um, but I always, you know, thought, well, you know, I'd like to be like that person and have the money and this, that and the other. But, but then, it, you know, you settle down and, and become more grateful for what I have. Um, I think that's what I have felt with this is... You know, the pressure's come off um, a lot more. Um, you know, I'm not completely out of the woods. Things still bother me. Um, uh, um, but but I, I, I don't get sort of so, so worried about the outcome, as I said. Um, and um, I, what did Elsie say? And, and we've been, I can't remember, but it's like, what, what the heck? You know, what the hell? Um, things happen. There's nothing you can necessarily do to stop them. Um, they're going to happen anyway, but it's how how I react uh, to to certain things, and you know I think I'm probably less controlling. Um, and kids are great, great way to observe. You know I've been able to observe myself <laughs> with my children, who you know they push your patience when you've got three under the, the age of ten, and they they know how to press your buttons, and um, you know I. I consciously find myself backing off, um, but also more unconsciously find myself backing off. Um, and you know, it's only when I sort of tend to reflect on a call like today, or with, with Elsie, or with Keith, that, that I get to see that. I get to see a little bit of the, you know, how it used to be. I mean, it was always pretty good, but. Uh, it's got better, um, and I'd say, you know, one of the more recent things is, is you know, a bit more connection with my dad. Um, you know, we've never fallen out, but we've never been the best of mates. Um, but I, you know, I've got more compassion for for his 
aspects of life and, and just more recently um, our relationships began to soften um, and I can see his life uh, I can't see his life but, but I have more understanding if you like or compassion for, for his problems or um, and you know I'm not going to wonder in and st you know here's the book and you know you're feeling your thinking you know and <laughs> it's not the right thing to do with my dad it just sort of repel uh, but but I think just by listening more um, being there a bit more for him and listening to his trials and tribulations um, so that's pretty cool you know that that's good um, and I, f I find I'm less judgmental of my friends um, and if I'm brutally honest <laughs> And I shared this on a coaching call. There's an awful thing to say, but I, I really, you know, did sometimes want my friends to fail, um, so that I could be at the top of the pecking order. And that's, you know, that's not great, is it? When when you see that, and um, you know, but 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 seeing it, so looking and observing it myself, that's a that's the start of the process. It's like, oh gosh, you know, I don't actually like what I see there, and this is harming me. I'm, I'm, I'm effectively harming myself with these, these compounds of thoughts that Sid talks about, and um, that I've built up for myself. And gosh, you know, that that's not that's not good for me. Um, yeah, so you know, I'm still not not the always the loudest person in a group or but but I'd say you know generally relationships uh, are better uh, yeah and I'm a lot easier on myself in social situation uh, and actually quite look forward to going to, to some of the, the things that I used to sort of dread or think oh gosh what am I going to say next <laughs> if someone asks me something uh, yeah, that's really really cool for, for someone like me is being quite shy most of their life um, and it's just a simple uh, realization that you know I felt judged all the time I suppose um, and you know just sort of gradually started to see for myself that actually people don't think about me <laughs> you know they go away and they're thinking about their own lives and so I, I found I can be more myself by being myself slightly more, um, I've got a little bit more of my my sort of humour back, uh, which has been fun. You know, gosh, I've been so serious for for so many years and <laughs> scared of life in so many ways. And um, yeah, and um, I think yeah. So and I I find you know it, if I lose my way, uh, I, I'm more conscious to. So it doesn't involve sort of doing anything, but what comes to me more is, for, for me, uh, if, if I'm feeling low or fearful about something, um, I just check in and, hang on, you're just feeling your thinking. God, got me again. And, and I calm down, for me, quicker than I used to. Um, and then by calming down, I I can go about my business with less on my mind, uh, whether that's a walk with my dog, or being with my kids, or working. Um, you know, it's 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 common sense, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's common sense. This, um, and I'll give you. A very trivial example, but um, I've just started a, 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 a new sort of small educational uh, program um, for, for business, basically. Um, and it's, most of it's coming to me online, and I've got two computer screens in front of me. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I'm being taught, uh, and then I'll get distracted by an email or Skype or something, and I'll pop off over here. And then I'll realise two or three minutes later that I've missed the whole damn lesson, and 
you know, it's, it's obvious, isn't it? That's common sense, you know, so it is an analogy. Um, you know, if I've got something else on my mind, how on earth can I focus on the, the real present, what I'm trying to do? It, it's a distraction. So just like at the beginning of this call, I said, right, I'm going to turn my Skype off, switch the email off. And there's so many sort of distractions, you know, the phone, phone might buzz, and I'll be looking, you know, who's that text from? And and I just find, for me, that's kind of an analogy with life. You know, when I get to see um, if my, I'm all over the place, it's like um, I'm not the best multitasker, you know, it's like, it's my thinking that's creating this, um, and that naturally allows me to put it down, so to speak, and then I get ideas. Um, you know, just thinking walking the dog this morning, and I exactly the same thing. You know, I, my train of thought was going down somewhere, and I thought you're just feeling your thinking here uh, and it went away and then I, I came up with a brilliant idea about so, well, what I thought was a brilliant idea out of the blue um, and you know, one of the things I've got to learn to do a bit like Richard Branson is write the blooming thing down otherwise I'll forget it but <laughs> that would work for me and maybe not other people yeah anyway we've gone on down the, down the rabbit hole from relationships I love these conversations because the natural flow takes us to the most beautiful places, doesn't it? And again, we're just allowing what comes in and, and seems right in the moment. And I love what you said about the two computer screens. I think that's a lovely metaphor because when you're you know, watching your lesson and you're present with the lesson and interested in taking it in and then suddenly, like the shiny object you know, of the other screen, mm you've missed that moment and, and that moment's never going to come back and that's yeah. so much what we all do in our lives yeah you know and when you talk about relationships you know and bringing it back to that it's the same thing so if I'm sitting with anybody let's take my dad for example and you know I'm thinking, oh god here he goes again you know ranting and raving about the weather <laughs> or whatever's bothering him at the time Portray my dad is lovely, by the way, and uh, you know, um, but, but I, I'm sort of it, you know, one of my traits was impatience. You know, I, I'm like, you know, an idea, and I, I'm off kind of thing. But then it's like, hang on, um, listen, just stop and listen, and put the phone down, turn the telly off, and listen to my dad, or let's move away from my dad, or you or my friend, or my kids, um, it, it's, it's that space, isn't it? It's that undivided attention that we give to one thing or one person. Um, and I've just I've clocked the fact, talking about this, that it is actually just energy, isn't it? It's the same thing, really. But you know, with people, we're particularly drawn because of our human sort of connection and our compassion I suppose which is why we're talking today um, it, it's common sense isn't it if you can you, you know I just think for myself I, I have a friend who, who, who I, I used to think was sort of particularly gifted you know I was like oh, goodness you know I used to he's one of these people I held up on the pedestal he was successful in my eyes financially time everything but then I he had this special talent, and he still does, of making you feel good in yourself. So you come away from a conversation with him, and what what's he actually doing? He's he's listening to you. He asks you questions about you. He very rarely talks. So when I first knew him, uh, he talked about himself, um, but he had this skill which you may or may not have been aware about, of asking you questions and opening you up. Um, and, you know, we, we, when we talk about ourselves, if you like, or our, our lives or our problems or things, and you come away from the conversation think, God, he's really nice, isn't he? You know, and then it's like, yeah, that's because he, he was sort of asking about me. Um, 
So I sort of saw that with him and other people and also through the three principles. If you give someone that undivided attention, um, they come away from it possibly with some sort of feeling. Um, and that feeling, perhaps what we're talking about here, is that, is that space, is that uh, love, if you like, um, call it, call it what, whatever one likes to call it, um, compassion, uh, and people come away from a conversation thinking, wow, you know, that's really great. And my, my wife's gifted at this naturally, um, which which I've, you know, learned from, if you like, um, but but being able to step back and see, gosh, you know, it's a real a real gift. You know, people come come away from her presence feeling enlightened, you know, because she doesn't sit there and talk about herself all day, <laughs> and she'll sit and give you know that that divided attention, undivided attention. And without sort of sounding too jumped up, um, you know, I experienced this in quite a profound way um, a few months ago. It was well, it was at Christmas time. Um, someone that I know, her her husband died um, from cancer just before Christmas, and she's having a, a real tough time. And what <laughs> you'll know more about this than I will, Gillian given your work with um, your, your special work with bereaved people, it seemed to me that most people were trying to give her advice um, about what she should do. Um, but for some reason, I didn't feel, you know, I had any advice to give her, but also it wasn't my place. So I just sat and listened to her for about 20 minutes um, but something weird happened to me when I did that I, I, I consciously thought oh, I'm going to just listen to you uh, and I sort of had this sort of experience where time flew by uh, and literally I, I was just tunnel with her and nothing else was, was sort of there and I don't, you know, I haven't sort of gone back to and said, you know, how did you feel after that? But you know, I just sensed that it was the right thing to do at the time. And you know, I know with practitioners of the three principles that 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 is part of the teaching is to give people the space um, um, and not judge them, um, and sometimes not well, not advise them. Um, because you know, I don't know what's right for that lady. I I, I don't know her well enough. And even if I did, um, it's as tough as it might seem for some people. Um, you know, sometimes our advice isn't the best advice for somebody. Um, sometimes it is, but um, you know. So that that was quite sort of profound. And then, you know, I've had the opportunity to have conversations with various other people recently. Um, who were uh, sort of bothered, I guess. And uh, what one example recently was? Oh, I'm just going back to that. You know, I I just happened to have a delivery that arrived on the doorstep, and I thought that was Christmas. So I grabbed out my favourite Sid Banks book, which is Second Chance, and I said, "Look, you don't have to read it, but..." Happy Christmas, and away you go. And I've got no idea whether she read it or not, but it doesn't matter. I'm not attached to whether she did or she didn't. Um, it, it, it's it's that which is nice again. Um, but but another example recently um, was a, a fellow who lives down the road who got involved with the I think it's seven eleven bombings in London. He was uh, one of the guys caught up on the tube. He wasn't injured himself, but he, he had to deal with dying people trapped in a tube station. Um, and, you know, I knew he'd been suffering for... for he, he'd suffered. Um, but for some reason, we started a conversation. Um, actually, it was to do with the river. 
<laughs> which is going back to the source again. This is my my little something that I love. So we found we found something that we enjoyed between us, and I've never really sort of spoken to this guy instead of you know just hello. Um, but for some reason he opened up to me, and I just thought, okay, I'm going to listen to you. Um, and he started to sort of tell me all about you know the events and how he was virtually catatonic, um, meaning he couldn't speak um, after you know immediately after the incident for about a year. Um, and gradually he's come out. He's had therapy and continues to. Um, and he 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 was going to come and steer a rowing boat. I've got. And I heard footsteps on the drive the night before, and I was lying there, and I knew it was him. And he'd put a note on my car to say, "I can't come." Um, and and I I guess that maybe he had some fearful thoughts, and sure enough, he came and said, "I'm so sorry. I couldn't do it because I'm scared." Um, I was like, "Wow, you know, for seven years he's been going through." mental hell um, and we just had a sort of conversation of 40 minutes and he said look I, I've never excuse me I've never told anybody uh, or discussed this with anybody outside my um, <laughs> you know my therapy or my family and I, just, I thought gosh you know how, how how lucky am I in a way that this guy is speaking to me and I thought, well, I'm, I'm not going to teach you anything. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's your thinking or this. I just just listened to him. And again, a couple of days later, I just dropped him um, second chance and said, look, you might want to read this or might not. So, um, yeah, so, you know, that I, I find that's pretty amazing, actually. Um, and who knows what's around the corner, you know, with this. Anyway, <laughs> I think when people experience deep listening, mm. which is what they've been experiencing with you, and being heard with no judgment, as you say, with no interjection or advice being given on your part, there's there's a sort of an energy flow that goes between people. It, it's, I call it sharing with, rather sharing in, rather than sharing with. Mm. And they're special moments, and people feel that they they feel they feel you being the principal's guy, don't they? They know it's it's an okay place to just talk. That's you know. Yeah. And you're just giving them that space if you like. Yeah. And that's it, you know, I, and I think for me, you know, deciding that I don't want to teach this for money, which I thought I might do to start with or, or to share, you know, it, it's it's simply, uh, you know, creating that space um, and then from it, who knows, you know, what, what might happen. But if I go evangelizing about it, uh, a lot of people back off and think, oh, God, you know, he's, he's a bit weird or, uh, you know, there might be the case where, where it's, you feel it's necessary. Um, but, but again, you know, it's nice for me to, to sort of have that space and not feel I've got to close the business here. That's really nice for me, you know, just to sort of wander around uh, with no pressure. Um, you know, because had I sort of gone down the coach route and done that, you know, probably, you know, I'd have forced it a bit. And um, that's, that, that to me is not so good. Um, but that's, you know, the other interesting part about this, and I'm conscious of the time here, but, um, you know, particularly with Elsie, um, you know, you just spend time with someone who, who, is so gentle. Gosh, you know, she's it's almost like she's she's holding a feather when she talks to you. Uh, I find I find it so moving, even just sort of being in her presence. And 
and not judging in any way or not feeling that judgment. Um, you know, she, she or, or the, the space just sort of draws out of you um, insight, if you like. Um, and the other thing, you know, initially I was a little bit nervous, gosh, you know, I'm going to speak into Elsie, who am I to be, you know, she, she, she's humble enough to, to say, God, you know, gosh, God, I never thought of that. Wow, you know, thanks, thanks for the learning. And I'm like, hang on a sec, you know, I'm paying you to, and she, she's like humble enough to, to realize something through what I've said, which is the same for everybody. You know, we, we hear it, it's like, well, what do you mean it's inside us all? And, um, you know, it is, it is. You, you simply <laughs> have to calm down enough. Uh, and that's where a coaching environment can be great because you, you, you kind of know in that environment that the phone's going to be turned off, the computer's not on, you're, you're like one-to-one -one, um, and you're not. You know, my experience of three principles teachers, coaches, sharers, whatever we want to educate us, is that you know, frankly all they're doing is creating a space for people to calm down, um, however long that might take, uh, for people then to start shutting down some of the noise that's going on and from that it comes, you know, this feeling, some sort of insight. Um, uh, and that's the simplicity of all of this, um, it, but it's common sense, isn't it? If you're trying to multitask left, right, and centre, and not finishing jobs, or it, that that it, you know, call it truth, call it common sense, call it God, call it whatever you like. Uh, that that's it. To me, it's common sense actually. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes I've been too too noisy to, to hear it. Yeah. And we as human beings, we tend to complicate life, don't we? Because we think we have to. Yeah. And and it is. It's very simple. Yeah. 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 And uh, I know I've been talking mostly, um, and I hope I've made sense to a few people because my brain can go off or my thoughts can go sort of left field, right field, everywhere, but, um, you know, even speaking to you now, time's flown. I don't know where it's gone. It feels, it, genuinely, it feels like 10 minutes, um, and that's being in the flow, isn't it? That's cool to me. I mean, <laughs> it might be bored stiff of what I've just said and switch up after five minutes. <laughs> they have well, an off button yeah. going. <laughs> oh, we've had a lovely, We're enjoying had a lovely time. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, if I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Guy, it's been brilliant. Um, and thank you. Thank, oh, thank you. you. It, thank you. It was lovely to hear you. We've never really had this amount of time to speak between our toes about this. <laughs> and it's just great to hear you talk about it. Oh, thank you. In a very deep place. Um. People want no, some money off now, don't they? Come on. Mm -hmm. People will want some money off now, we promise. Well, them. yes. Yes, and I think they'd probably like to find out where they can get hold of you as well. Okay. Um, well, as I say on my website, um, although I'm not a qualified, <laughs> I haven't got a certificate above my door, um, you know, I'm not, not not trading money for, for sharing it. You know, I love talking to people. If they pick up the phone, I'm happy to point them in the right direction advise them about you know what's in Sid's particular things um, although you know pe people are probably drawn to various books and materials uh, and I think that's what I suggest but if people would know you know what's this book okay with well, the enlightened garden is about a group of um, therapists who go to a conference in the UK it's like a parable um, you know it's written that way or the missing link is more sort of factual if you like you know um, I can give advice on that I'm not going to say buy this or buy that but happy to help people um, which I do quite regularly via email or just pick the phone up um, and 
so all the details are on the website, which is sydneybanksproducts.com. Um, we promised a discount, and it is 15.15% um, for anybody who listens to this. And I think you know, I'm happy to hold that um, if people watch the recording. Quite honestly, um, that's fine. Um, and People can use it once, um, so probably worth buying a, you know, a few things to take advantage of it. Uh, and simply, um, they've got to use the code in the, um, the cart area. There's an area for coupon, and it is Hangout, which is spelled H-A-N-G-O-U-T. Simple as that. Put that in. Refresh the car and it'll take off 15% if you go, want to go and purchase. So I hope people take advantage of that. Excellent. Thank you, Guy. That's, that's a generous that's discount. Thank you. That's a um, and um, uh, as Guy said, go to the www.sydneybanksproducts.com, um, choose what you want to buy, and then when you get to the checkout part, I guess, isn't it, Guy? Yeah. You, the... Um, discount code hangout that's it simple as that yeah <laughs> simple and I can't do the noise that <laughs> the advert people do but yep. <laughs> <laughs> guy I think oh gosh yes I just looked at the time as well um, I think we're done okay and there's right. anything else you'd like to add um no I mean I, I no, I mean, I think I could go on talking about it all day, um, as you've probably gathered, but um, I think people will probably need a cup of tea by now, so. <laughs> as I said, at any time, I'm more than happy to speak to anybody, uh, because I, I just happen to do that, so, and share if I can. Lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you ever so much, Guy. Um, and see you at Ticken. Yeah, look forward to it. Okay. Um, hopefully a few other people there. Okay. Yep, bye for now. Okay, bye. Bye.